project to develop a low-cost ventilator started back in mid-March uh, when the peak of the COVID-19 outbreak was still in Italy uh, and there were much smaller clusters in the United States. Uh, at that time, there were a number of physicians in the U.S. who saw a lack of access to mechanical ventilators as a potential huge public health crisis that could lead to unnecessary, uh, unnecessary death. And so I began to interact with a lot of clinicians, including a handful from UCLA Health and across the United States to understand what were the issues uh, that the COVID-19 pandemic was presenting us and how could we solve that. And really, this pandemic has uh, exacerbated a known issue across the United States and around the world where there's millions or billions of people who do not have access to adequate respiratory care when they need it. So what we're hoping to do is to continue this project uh, to make it more than just an emergency use device so that we'll have something that not only could be used in, uh, in emergency scenarios, but could be used in broader critical care scenarios. Um, so, and, and this is something because it's low cost, it could be used in rural clinics in the United States, uh, in emerging or developing countries, uh, or really anywhere around the world where people have not had access to uh, ventilatory support due to the cost and complexity of current devices. The UCLA SUER model is a machine learning empowered new academic model designed for COVID-19. Academic models are usually used to characterize the dynamic relationship among different groups of people. Here, each letter of SUER represents a different group of people that are involved in the academic process. In specific, S represents a group of individuals who are susceptible to the disease. U represents a group of unreported cases. E represents a group of individuals who have been exposed to a disease, but do not have symptoms yet. And I represent a group of individuals who are infected by the disease. Finally, R represents a group of people who have recovered or died from COVID-19. It also provides the predictions of hospital bed and ICU bed occupancy, which can directly reflect the future demand of healthcare resources in different communities. For instance, if a model predicts an increase in hospital bed usage, we may expect an increasing need for PPEs and healthcare workers. Similarly, the increase in ICU bed usage may lead to an increasing need for ventilators. This information is a crucial factor in allocating medical resources. There are several different kinds kinds of air pollution. People who are in lower socioeconomic brackets tend to um, be more likely to live in near roadway environments and therefore be exposed to um, near roadway pollution. So myself and other research groups at UCLA have done a lot of work trying to characterize pollutant levels in near roadway environments and to figure out ways to mitigate near roadway environment pollution. The air quality is still not good enough. It still certainly has health impacts for people living in many parts of the state, but it is 75% cleaner than it was when we started. And not only have the regulations that we've developed in California clean up the air in California, they have also diffused out into the rest of the country and in many ways influenced air quality regulation and effective policy around the world.